Weather outside is frightful. Steve, why don't you grab a scarf? Steve, we're back this week and we're taking a look at Scarf. This is from Uprising Games and I didn't really know anything about this title heading into it. It's full of a lot of mystery, but what was your first impression? I have to say, I, I kind of enjoyed this game. It's visually, it's kind of like the pastel, kind of the nice, kind of soft dark textiles on the, on the, on the graphic side of things. <laughs> Uh, the the storyline is a little bit obscure for me at the moment. The, the the idea I get of it is there's a creature that can metamorph into like a fabric, and the humans have been using the fabric to make portals and things like that. This entity it drives the humans out and disappears, and then you have like a baby entity which can form into a scarf, and it befriends you as a human. And you have to find the mum. That's the kind of idea I get of this game. Yeah, there's a lot of mystery to it, though. It, it is really hard to understand the details of the story because it's not exactly told to you in a normal narrative way, which is something I actually really appreciate about this game because it gives you an air of mystery to try and solve. It gave me a lot of motivation to make it through those levels. and. Some of them are yeah. easy, some of them are not so easy, and that's something that got my interest going, is because I'd finally hit a spot that kind of held me up, and I thought, okay, here it is. But the gameplay is quite simple. When it comes to solving yes. these problems, there's not a whole lot to do. You progress from point A to B, of course, but a lot of the time you're presented with a door, and there will be different feathers, as you mentioned, that you have to collect in order to open that door to progress further. And that usually results in a lot of jumping across gaps, a kind of careful timed movements, or yes. using your abilities that you get as you progress through the game. You can kind of use your scarf friend to grab hooks above you and kind of volley yourself across chasms. And there's a glide ability that lets you, again, fly across big spaces. but that's about as complicated as it gets. Sometimes you're lifting crystals around and putting them in these pedestals that'll open up more of the map. Yeah. These kind of platforms will fade into existence and then you can use them to, again, get to the door at the end. And that's sort of the loop. Exactly. I, I did notice well, there is collectibles on the way. Oh yeah. And it's supposed to help to sort of tell a bit more of the story. Um, I didn't. I haven't found too many at the moment, and I'm, I'm sort of stuck on one of the levels at the moment. I believe there's only three levels. Yeah. On this one, like an underwater, like a desert, and then a forest kind of one. And at the moment, like I said, I've only found one item, and I'm still trying to progress through this and find out what the story is about. From what I can gather, jumping through these three worlds is kind of this atmosphere of sadness. There's kind of these ruins everywhere and there's these called shade entities and some of these souls that you collect along the way which again wasn't quite explained well but it gives a kind of an eerie dark feeling to the game that's otherwise very bright. The artistry in this is quite pleasing to my eye at least and there's kind of a different palette swap going on between the three levels. I have to say the forest is absolutely my favorite just because it was a little more positive, if nothing else. Kind of like a mellow, chill out music as well. And in some respect, it kind of make, it suits the game because it's not a fast, pass, a, a fast paced game. Mm -hmm. It's very slow. It's kind of slowish until you know what you're doing because not really knowing what the story you have to do and then solving out the puzzles and like you said, the puzzles are not hard at all really. I found some of them is either moving blocks to form a picture or somewhere below or like I said moving crystals to make platforms materialize so you can get to these feathers that will eventually unlock either a bridge or something to get you to the end part to move on to the next stage. It just takes a little bit of thinking. It's not as easy as walking to the door. It could be a lot more action-packed but I don't think the game really needs it in this case. It's 
more of a lone experience, kind of just a mystery. It's not about fighting the monsters on the world or anything like that. Scarf was quite a mystery when I jumped into it, and getting through it, it remains a mystery, but it's something that has stayed on my mind and keeps me coming back. I really have enjoyed this game, despite it being not very action-packed, but I think that's actually the mark of a good game here. If I'm going to put a score on this one, I think this is a very solid entry. I'm going to give this a 7.5. A little bit of tweaks here and there, but I'm very happy with it. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm with you on a lot of things. I did enjoy this game. I think it'd be good played on maybe the Switch or something like that, like on the move. Um, and for me, I'm getting this a little bit less than you. I'm getting the, giving this a 7. Scarf is a very calm and mysterious platforming adventure. It has beautiful environments to explore and light puzzles to solve. 